Welcome back to the Movie Recap. Today's movie will be a 2020 American war drama film titled The Five Bloods. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The movie starts with a preview of black people's history. Then, there were revolutions, assassinations, and wars among notable people like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and almost everyone who started the black people movement in the 1960s. In the present-day Ho Chi Minh city of Vietnam, two big black guys named Melvin and Eddie come across each other's paths in a hotel lobby, and they have been friends ever since. As they greet each other, other friends approach them, Otis and Paul, and there it is the bloods are finally complete. They have been good friends ever since they fought in the Vietnam War back in the day, and they are veterans who are now trying to go back to the place that changed their lives. The first thing they do when they land in Vietnam is to party in a nearby club. The Bloods enjoy the night tremendously, wherein they just talk about politics, war, and life in general. While enjoying their drink, a disabled beggar child comes upon their table and asks for money, which triggers Paul, the hot-tempered guy in the group. Eddie just gives 20 bucks to the kid for it to leave and have peace. Moments later, their guide Vin arrives and welcomes them to Nam. Vin is a lovely, welcoming guy with a cousin in the same bar that frees the Bloods a drink. But, unfortunately, when the night ends for the boys, the beggar kid throws firecrackers toward them that literally blow up the Bloods. Looking back from the last time they were in Vietnam, the Bloods are tasked to find the bombed C-47 CIA plane in the middle of the Vietnamese jungle. There are five original members of the Blood, Paul, Otis, Melvin, Eddie, and Norman, who sadly passed away. The Bloods could find the said plane and recover it, but some Vietnamese soldiers fought against them and blew up their helicopter. Because of how good the Bloods are, they can kill all the Vietnamese soldiers even if they are outnumbered, thanks to Norman, who leads the group. When they successfully killed the Vietnamese soldiers, they went inside the plane and opened a safe vault, when they shot it with their guns and could open it, it was full of gold bars. The Bloods are delighted and excited about what they will get from these gold bars when they go home. Back in the present day, Vin tours the Bloods to the modern-day city they used to see as a very poor one. The Bloods are pretty amazed at how things have changed in Vietnam in the last few years since the war. After walking a little longer, Otis leaves the group and parts ways on his own, his friends are curious about where he will be going, but rest assured, it's for their business why they came there in the first place. Otis goes to a place of an old, good friend named Teen. She's a businesswoman who happens to be Otis's ex-lover. When they enjoy their dinner together, they talk about how to get out of Vietnam without being busted in customs and still have a big piece of gold in their hands. Since Teen is an expert international export businesswoman, she has connections. While having a deep conversation, Teen's daughter Mitchin enters the room after going on a grocery spree. Mitchin looks half Vietnamese and half black American. When Otis and Mitchin introduce one another, it leaves Otis speechless as he slowly realizes if that's his daughter, and yes, she is. The following day, the Bloods and Teen meet with the big man Desroche, a French guy who can actually help the Bloods with their problem. They negotiate about the shares and prices until they finally come up with their agreement. When the meeting finishes, Paul goes to his hotel room only to find out that his son, David is there. Paul is pretty shocked and mad at the same time, asking his son what he's doing there. He confesses that he reads his father's emails and finds out that they will find Norman's remains and gold, and David wants his share. It pisses off his father when they come up with an urgent meeting with the Bloods. It's too late to kick him out, or he will blow up the whole plan. And yup, that's how David got into the adventure. The following day, their journey begins. They meet at the port at first to ride a boat, when Teen gives Otis a gun, whom she instructs that he needs to hide for emergency purposes. The Bloods reminisce about Norman's memory while passing in the river market. It's pretty nostalgic how Norman lived a purposeful life, he was the strongest and wisest among them all. He can kill and can't be killed simultaneously, and he was born to be a soldier. He was also educating his fellow brothers about black people's history and story, all the injustices and discrimination they've been struggling with ever since. Norman is the best guy ever. While all these things are happening, Paul, sitting beside the window boat, is being disturbed by one of the chicken vendors. The vendor tries to convince him to buy, but knowing Paul is short-tempered, they end up fighting and almost killing each other. When the boys arrive in the nearby town, they reside in a bungalow house, where David meets another Caucasian person named Hetty, she's a French woman who opted to live in Vietnam for their family business that detonates minefields and to help kids in need. 
They get along until two of Henny's friends, Seppo and Simon, join the table. They are having a good time drinking until Melvin enters a scene that forces them to go home early. The following day, they begin their hiking journey in the jungle. Knowing that these men are old, they are pretty slow walkers, which makes the trip longer. They choose to sleep in the wilderness that same night. Even though David is pretty scared of whatever noises he hears, his father assures him that he is safe no matter what. The Bloods plus David continue their trip the following day, and they need to stop because David needs to deposit his cash into the bank. So he walks far away with a shovel in his hands and starts digging when suddenly he unearths a gold bar. With too much excitement, he shouts like a kid and calls everyone into his place. The Bloods are pleased as they discover the gold bars they've been searching for, it's scattered across the field, so they need to get them one by one. When they get to the riverside, they discover human bones. Paul, who is very attached to Norman, starts digging like a dog until he finds Norman's dog tag and confirms that it's his remains. The Bloods is once again, heartbroken. But finally, they can get Norman home after such a long time. They are complete again. They get the bones and start the journey again. They keep on walking until they decide to rest in a treeless open field. Paul justifies how David should get his fair share since he was the one who discovered the gold bars. This conversation leads to another argument that frustrates Eddie. He keeps walking while shouting until Eddie steps on a mine and explodes. The Bloods can't believe what has happened until Eddie shouts for help. But unfortunately, his body is torn apart, and it only takes him a few minutes until he dies. The remaining Bloods are now frustrated and argue whether they need to leave without Eddie or bring him with them. As the conversation heats up, David asks for his father's help, he is now the one who steps on a minefield. David panics, and they don't know what to do, but surprisingly, Hetty and her friends are there to do their job, detonating the minefield. They offer help, but Paul still refuses, he just grabs a rope and puts it on David's body, all of them pull David and miraculously survive the bomb. But even after Hetty and her friends help the Bloods, the men still decide to tie them up because they might cause them to be in trouble. As a result, they have now held hostage while the men are burying Hetty. In the middle of the night, David allows Hetty to urinate, which causes his father to blow up his mind again, and Paul wants to be in control of everything. So he holds Otis's gun, which is why he's so confident that he is the boss. Still, after some minutes, Melvin, David, and Otis work together to get the gun from Paul and hit him to weaken his body. And Seppo escapes and runs for his life. The following morning, Vin is waiting for them at their meeting place when they all arrive, along with their hostages. When everyone wants to get involved in getting their shares of the gold, the Vietnamese come along with Seppo, he's being held hostage. The Vietnamese like to get the gold bars in their bags, but they refuse at first, but one of the Viet soldiers opens the bag. But surprisingly, these old men are still good at fighting, and they fight against the Vietnamese soldiers. Shooting there and shooting here, there is a pool of blood everywhere, and even Vin fights. Seppo, who tries to escape, blows himself up as he runs into a minefield. In the end, all the Viet soldiers die. David gets shot and can't even walk, Paul throws another tantrum, gets his bag, and leaves the group. He walks out and parts away from them. Now, as he walks alone in the jungle, he talks to himself and imagines that he is the best soldier ever. Finally, he gets to the point where he hallucinates Norman's soul, which is in front of him, showing his gunshot. This brings back the day when Norman died and it's because they are fighting against the Viet soldiers when Norman and Paul stand in the torn, wrecked plane. A young Vietnamese woman soldier enters the plane, and it shocks Paul, that's why he shoots a lot. But, to his surprise, he accidentally shoots Norman in the stomach. Paul tries to revive his friend, but it's too late, and Norman dies. It's why Paul was never the same again after Norman died, he was haunted by the fact that he killed his friend. People suffer because of the demons he keeps inside, especially David, who struggled the most because of his verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive father. David felt unloved, unwanted, and hated all throughout his life by his father. While hallucinating, Norman hugs Paul and tells him that he is forgiven. What happened is an accident and no one else's fault. Back in the group, they continue walking until they find an abandoned temple where they rest. While being treated, Otis gives David a letter that indicates, do not open upon my death, and it saddens David. He is able to open up to Hyde about his mother's death and how his father has hated him ever since, his tears are endless as he tries to reminisce about the pain and traumas in his heart. 
Meanwhile, in Paul's situation, he is relieved but loses his bag due to snakebite and being victimized by the bait. The Viets capture him and force him to dig where the gold is, but Paul knows how to trick these gullible people, and no matter what happens, he's not going to tell where the others are. So after cheating the Viets, they immediately ambush Paul and fire at him multiple times. However, in the temple, they are preparing for the arrival of the Viets and Des Roche. Because Melvin is correct, it's an ambush, not the Vietnamese soldiers. Even Vin entrusts his last will to Otis, and they leave and get to their positions. After a few minutes, Des Roche arrives with his boys, forcing them to get the bag. Otis tries to negotiate until the Viets discover that only stones are inside the bag. They get mad and try to kill Otis, but since Vin and Melvin are good sharpshooters, they kill the Viets in a snap. After that, there were endless shootings, bombings, and killings everywhere. Des Roche tries to save himself by hiding in the trees and trying to escape with his car, but Melvin blows it up. The bloods outnumber Des Roche, but Des Roche gets the grenade and throws it into the temple where the others stay. Fortunately, Melvin sees it and covers himself for it. He jumps into the grenade and throws his body until it explodes, and Melvin dies in a snap. With Otis being the only one left, defenseless, and having gunshots on his leg, Des Roche cornered and tried to kill him. But surprisingly, Des Roche is the one who gets shot. Thanks to David, who is inside the temple, it's a bullseye shot to him. David, Hyde, Simon, and Vin go to Otis after a long day of war and pain. They struggle to accept the fact that Melvin, Eddie, and Paul are now dead. But they can't do anything but accept that they're gone. As they return to America, they split their shares equally, Norman also remains and finally gets to go home after such a long time. His sisters are waiting for him at the airport. Melvin's share goes to his daughter, Cassie Cooper, who has been struggling financially. While Eddie's share is being donated to a local school he loved dearly, which is also a massive supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement. With Seppos, his $2 million share is profited from the Vietnamese kids who lost their parents because of a minefield, and Hyde builds a foundation under his name. While Vin quits his job as a tour guide and starts his life. Otis gets to say goodbye to Teen before leaving Vietnam, and he also says goodbye to his long-lost daughter, Mitchin. They get to bond with one another and have a great time. And lastly, David opens his father's letter to him. Paul is speaking to his son, apologizing for whatever pain he has caused, for being haunted by the demons that significantly affect David. He assures his son for the last time that he loves him, even if he isn't able to show him. He's just hurting by the loss of his wife. But indeed, he and Jacqueline love David with all their heart. The movie ends with the blood's last picture together, but Otis being only the survivor, and how these people fight with the blood impact of brotherhood in their veins. In the end, Dr. Martin Luther King's speech only shows how important every life is, no matter their color and race. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.